Thanks for tuning into the trade setup with me, Neerat Shah. Good morning, and let's take stock of the markets. Remember, commodities coming off is possibly the principal key point to focus on in the session today. But first, the global news flow. European markets ended lower after the UK inflation numbers missed estimates. Uh, uh, Mind you, globally yields after falling for after four days have just risen a little bit, so Treasury yields inched higher as Fed still sees no rate cuts anytime soon. I must tell you, this will change on a dime uh, when it has to. Until then, I don't think anybody can predict what will happen there. Uh, let's move on. The US markets ended lower, but NASDAQ 100 is futures have risen after a very strong NVIDIA Q2 earnings. They run through April. They came out with a blockbuster set of numbers, actually very good set of numbers, let me put it that way, and very strong commentary as well. Folks, NVIDIA is real, and it is saying yes to every question that is being thrown at it. So, I mean, you know, that's just the market cap, the, the very large market cap that NVIDIA enjoys, but I think it's putting on a very strong performance quarter after quarter after quarter. So strong show there. What is not showing strong is uh, base metals. So copper prices are down 12% since Tuesday morning highs. Aluminum also is off 3% since those. So for all the rally that we've had, copper prices are coming off now, and that is something to be mindful of. Remember, they've had a fabulous rally, of course, so that's to be kept in mind. And oil has extended its losing streak. It's booked the third straight consecutive day decline. And therefore, watch out for, you know, I mean, there are investing implications here, right? Watch out for Hindalco, Hindustan Copper, uh, on the negative side, watch out for positives, or Nalco on the negative side, watch out for positives like oil marketing companies, paint companies, all of these might actually do positive in today's session, so be mindful of that. But let's get to the trade setup. Election nervousness, to my mind, is behind. The momentum is still in favor, and it was evident by the way the markets ended at the day's highs yesterday. Now, the global markets are soft today, so we may not have a great uptick today, but that's to be kept in mind that the momentum is still in favor. Remember, FI short covering in index futures continues. In fact, the long short ratio um, uh, came off quite materially in three days, from May 18 to May 21st. It came off quite materially, so therefore we know that the FI short covering, and that is a very large portion, by the way, they have fairly large shorts, but that continues in the markets. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to call the FMCG rally that we saw yesterday as whether it's bottom fishing or whether it is a bit of defensive bent of the market. But for now, we'll just leave it as it is. It is a day's job. We don't know if this will continue or no. Very difficult to call if the FMCG stocks will continue to rally on RBI comments about rural showing a bit of an uptick. It may well do, but really difficult to place a handle there. What is easier is, like I said, base metals, uh, weak China demand, firm dollar. In fact, there are a number of reasons why copper prices, for example, are plunging lower. One, Shanghai inventories remain high. Suppliers of copper wires and bars are cutting the output due to slower sales as well. And the China data that has come out, China Statistics Bureau has reported a 9% uptick in copper output as well. And remember, I mean, from, from Feb 25th or thereabouts, prices were up 43% in the last three months before the fall happened. So there has been a very sharp rally. This pullback shouldn't surprise people. Be mindful of some of these. Now, like I said, it's important to focus on stocks, and we focused on you know, the commodity names. Let's focus on the results now. I'll start off with Jubilant Foodworks. That's the first stock on my radar. Revenues are up 24% at 1573. The estimates were 1331. Volume growth was strong because they were done away with the delivery charges. Margins were okay, 19.7 versus 19.6. The estimates were 20.6. No big surprises there on the margins front. Bottom line, don't look at this, this number. There were one-offs there. But Per se, the revenue and the profit numbers were ahead of estimates. Now, more important thing is the commentary and the reasons thereof. One, the gross margins in quarter four expanded 130 basis points to 76.6%, led by commodity deflation, which is, which is great news for Jubilant. More importantly, Jubilant Foodworks in the call said that they aspire at near 3% like-for-like -like growth, which will help deliver 21% EBITDA margin. They were at 197 remember? They're talking about 21% EBITDA margin. This should please the street, as also the waiver of the delivery charge-led volume gains are a key trigger as per brokerages. Just one quick point here. The waiver of the delivery charge was accountable for only 10 days in the quarter gone by. It will be accountable for the whole quarter. So one is looking at fairly strong volume optic for Jubilant in a weak demand scenario. Watch out for Jubilant Foodworks. Could well be a stock that could do well today. Multiple brokerages have different views here. What is not done well is GMM Fordler. 
Revenue is down 14.5% at 741. The estimates were 925. Big miss on revenue, big miss on margins, big miss on profitability. Margins at 12.3. The estimates were 16%. So not only was there a revenue miss, there was also a margin miss. As a result of which bottom line, down 13% at 29 crores, the estimates were 75 crores. Somehow it is not getting its act right despite being a very large company now, uh, GMM Fodler, very likely will correct in the session today. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. Garden Reach ship builders had no such problems. Splendid show. The stock has done really well, by the way, so it needs to deliver. But revenues, uh, much better than estimates. Margins, I thought, uh, will come up on your screen. Margins, I thought, uh, also, from 7.1 to 8.9 is a very strong beat on the expectations and on the reported numbers, as a result of which, bottom line showed over a 100% uptick at 103%, 112 crores, the estimates 102 crores. Now, because the stock has done so well, difficult to call if there will be a big reaction or no, but suffice to say, the numbers lived up uh, to the kind of rally that the stock has had. Uh, PG Electroplast, another one which had a very strong quarter, revenues up 30% at 1077 crores, the estimates were 1124, uh, largely in line with estimates, but the margin performance was strong, 10.8 versus 9.1, the expectations were 7.9, as a result of which the bottom line performance was better than expected, 73% uptick at 70 crores, the estimates were 56.57, very likely could react positively in the session today as well. What will not do well is HEG, revenues down 11%, uh, margins weak, pat weak, uh, very wobbly performance. While the stock has done well thus far, uh, I'll be surprised, really surprised if it doesn't react negatively. I haven't looked at the con call commentary. I don't know if the con call has happened and I don't know if they've sounded optimistic about what could happen in Q1, but purely on the basis of Q4, I will be very surprised if the stock doesn't show a negative reaction. Mind you, yesterday we spoke about dollar industries with such fanfare that it'll do well because the performance was so strong and it started well, but ended lower. So maybe some commentary related issues could also come in, which is why I'm a bit careful about HEG because it's a commodity stock. Grasim, I thought delivered on most counts. Revenues were up at 12.7% uh, at 37,000 crores. Margins were okay, PAT was okay. And I thought from whatever little I saw, uh, in, in, in terms of brokerage notes, uh, there was a bit of constructive commentary uh, that Grassim gave as well. So I'll watch out for this one. So Morgan Stanley, for example, says that there's a small EBITDA beat led by the Viscose business. Uh, their target prices uh, is about 2560, which is about a 5% upside to the current market price of 2436. So be mindful of Grassim, not a bad set of numbers. Torrent Power was ho oh, hum. Um, are, we, are we getting Torrent Power? Yes. Uh, revenues up 8% at 6529. The estimates were 7092. Um, margins, pat as well, kind of, uh, kind of almost in line. But for a stock which has done a remarkable job, a bit of a miss, maybe it disappoints uh, the street. So watch out for that one. Uh, Ramco Simmons is interesting, viewers. Keep this in mind. It's a, it's a bit of a tricky play here on Ramco. Revenues are up 4.1% at 2678 crores. The estimates were 2503. So they're done well on the revenue front. But the margins were weak, 15.6 versus 16%. The estimates were 18.5 as a result of which the PAT numbers, okay, 129, the estimates were 135. The key is for Ramco, two, th two things. One, what MK has said. So MK is saying that the recent stock correction in prices, in uh, pr recent stock correction, which is about 25% in the last three months, prices in the near term challenges, they have a positive view on the stock. I think they've upgraded the stock to an ad. Yes, they have. The target price is 865 versus the current price of 774. The other thing is Ramco in its commentary is scaled back CapEx. That is a problem for Ramco that there was a very large CapEx that they announced every quarter. I think they've scaled this back, which is a positive. And um, aside of that, uh, do we have something else? Yes, Metro Brands, the numbers were okay. I mean, largely in line. The PAT number was up because of the loss that they had on account of FILA, but otherwise, uh, the numbers were, 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 were largely okay and no big deals. And some uh, mutual fund buying seen in pharma names. So both Granules as well as RT Pharma Labs. Granules, Axis MF bought 25 lakh shares at 405. I think one more brokerage probably bought, Fidelity Funds bought. And in, uh, and in um, RT Pharma Labs, Quant Mutual Fund has bought. So watch out for some of these pharma names as well. Well, I hope this helps you set, get set up for the trade uh, this morning. Uh, this is the digital version. We, of course, talk about it extensively on TV as well. So tune in at 8 a.m. But thanks so much for tuning in to this version of the trade setup.